It was in 1940, 41, when the situation in, with German radio was this. They were broadcasting 24 hours a day all over the world on shortwave in many, many languages. They put a huge premium, Goebbels and the Foreign Office, who both had representatives in uh, radio, put a huge premium on shortwave radio, not only uh, to, as an instrument of policy, as an instrument of ideology and propaganda, but it was failing, and it was failing for a reason to the United States. It, their, their efforts were failing because everybody sounded too Teutonic. And there was, I found in the Bundesarchive in Berlin, a memo saying we've got to find people who know how to speak in, Ameri in the American colloquial. Everybody sounds, there's too many thick accents, they sound too German, they sound too thick, and they don't know how to relate to the basic American citizen. And the whole propaganda apparatus at that time in 1940 to 1941 was aimed specifically at keeping the United States neutral, out of the war. That was the, 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 the main propaganda point towards the United States. Mildred signs on. She's paid on a per diem basis. Unlike other Americans who became propagandists for the Germans. These are pictures of other Americans who were uh, indicted in 1943, July of 1943. They were indicted for their radio work. Ezra Pound was indicted for service to Italy during the war. They were indicted for treason. Robert H. Best, Constance Drexel, Jane Anderson, Ezra Pound, Douglas Chandler, Max Otto Koischwitz, Edward Delaney, and Fred W. Kaltenbach. So the one person who meant something to Mildred Gillers and changed her from a mere announcer who spun records and made announcements into a propagandist was Max Otto Koschwitz. 